when do you think supersetting makes sense and how can you do it in a way that doesn't limit your muscle growth? There are two kinds of supersets. There's agonist supersets and unrelated muscle supersets. Agonist supersets means the same muscle getting stimulated. So for example, I do cable tricep pushdowns and my triceps are already very fatigued, very close to failure. And without much rest or any rest at all, I do flat dumbbell presses where again, my triceps are instantly the limiting factor and are again driven very close to failure. As a matter of fact, they're always close to failure through that second set. It's a great technique, probably not to save time, but to drive a really high degree of stimulus into one muscle, using the opportunity that's already pre-exhausted and thus close to failure to drive it close to failure again with minimal amount of load. And Mostly people who are in, experiencing trouble growing a muscle or really full send into advanced hypertrophy will be using those kinds of supersets. The other kind of superset are unrelated muscle supersets, and that's when you do a set of squats. And then you do a set of pull-ups right after, and then you rest 30 seconds and maybe you repeat the process. Those supersets, none of the muscles, the major ones that you're using in the squat are using in the pull-up. So while your legs are recovering, you're doing pull-ups and stimulating your back and biceps and rear delts. 30 seconds later, you start training legs again, your biceps and back and rear delts aren't fully recovered. But during the time that you're doing squats, they are recovering to some extent. And by doing that, you can save an unbelievable amount of time and still get a very good stimulus. Now, for a professional attempt at building muscle, I'd say that's still a little bit subpar because to have the highest quality leg workout possible, the only thing you need to be doing between sets of squats is resting, just sitting there, walking around, pacing a little bit, lying down, drinking some drinks, whatever it takes to get you back up to high performance. Because if you do something right after your squat set, a lot of times, it's just the performance on both exercises really rapidly degrades if you're really big, if you're really strong, if the exercises are systemically taxing. But if you're a person who's going for a body that is healthy, very well, very fit, very appealing, pretty jacked, you can get that body in two or three hours a day, or a day, good God, two or three hours per week total of training by using unrelated supersets and stacking exercises together so that You've done six exercises, or sorry, six attempts at an exercise, four sets of each one, but each one's a superset. So you really trained 12 muscles or muscle groups during that time in a time that would normally take someone to train six. So with an hour on Monday, an hour on Wednesday, an hour on Friday, a full body, unrelated supersetting, you can nuke your whole body, no problem, and have a physique and a level of health and a level of aesthetics and strength that most people think is, oh, you're clearly addicted to fitness and you're obviously spending just hours and hours a day doing this. And that's not even close. If you are ultra elite, you want your biggest possible muscles, I would say in most cases, unrelated muscle supersetting just isn't going to work all that well. For example, if I can do 20 reps with the 30 pound dumbbells on lateral raises on a bench and I can squat 500 for a set of 10, if I squat 500 for 10, as soon as I get off that and I go do lateral raises, I'm getting the 30s for five, and then I'm throwing up all over myself. <laughs> there is no supersetting happening. <laughs> I did each exercise at this point, when you're very muscular, very advanced, it takes so much out of you, you probably need the rest. But if you're a beginner or intermediate, and especially if your goals in fitness is just basically to have a real sexy body, which I never got, I believe it, I, every day I pray for it, then you can definitely do that with those unrelated supersets. And I'll even put a finer point on it. I think the vast majority of people who come to the gym to try to get that healthy, hot body should be training with unrelated supersets 90% of the time. And I think when their trainers don't train them like that, it's a bit of a ripoff. So for example, my uh, colleague at RP, uh, 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 Nick Shaw and myself, when we came up in fitness in New York about 15 years ago, we noticed that um, a lot of trainers were charging people a lot of money and then getting them on the cable and having them do like rear delt crossover flies. And it's this is a 45 year old woman who trains twice a week. Why are we targeting her rear delt, which is the size of one of my forefingers? Can't we have her do a compound movement to target that and her biceps and her back? Is like, okay, great. Yes, we can. And then why is she resting for three minutes between sets? Can't we get her to do some other muscle she didn't just train? Which, by the way, adds a crazy cardio and calorie burning benefit. It's fun. You're out of breath and improves your cardiovascular fitness and your health even more. It's just all right answers. So I think most personal trainers in the U.S. 
in the world for people that don't have professional or really exotic aspirations for the physique that just want a healthy, happy physique, then that's probably the best way to train by a mile. So for these full body workouts, like how many sets per how many sets per workout should they do? You mentioned the pull ups and then the squats, then I would assume it could be like a bench and then lunge shoulder press and like an RDL. Is that how you would program it? Something yeah, like that? Yeah, totally. And so it depends on what your split is, because if you have upper lower split, you can do only upper movements one day and only lower. And thus you can do lots of stuff. So the number of exercises can change basically. If it's whole body, you might have to do a few more exercises to do that. So those are some questions. Another one is, where are you in your fitness journey? If you are a beginner and you've never trained before, just three total pairings, six total exercises, one set of each is your first workout. And that's whole body. And then you repeat that half a week later and you train two times a week for a month or two. You're going to get great results. After a few weeks, you're going to say, well, this one set of each really isn't that hard anymore. Increase to two. And then after about 12 to 16 weeks training twice a week, you'll be up to 20 total sets per workout, maybe even 25. And like, this feels challenging, but great. You're going to have great results. And you say, yeah, I could be doing more though. And I want to do more. Then you increase to three days a week, work up from 10 total sets all the way up to 20 total sets per workout and kind of repeat that cycle until you feel like, oh, this is really great and sustainable, or I need a new challenge. And then you probably add another session for the week four sessions and so on and so forth. When it comes to when it comes to exercises, what what do you think is the most underrated exercise as far as like bang for the buck? Bang for the buck. Underrated exercise. <laughs> I'm always curious about these questions as I don't know of any rating committee that does this. I wonder how we aggregate ratings. So I'd say the clean and squat to press mm -hmm. is it highly over, uh, underrated for uh, being a great full body exercise. The clean portion works most of your back and it works a lot of your posterior chain and your glutes. The squat portion works more or less your entire lower body, uh, especially the pushing muscles they're in. And then the press afterwards works a lot of your pushing muscles. So if you combine that with a few other exercises, this is an exercise that takes care of like 80% of your body. Very few people do it outside of CrossFit. CrossFitters do it all the time because they decided to just run right into the challenge uh, box head first, which is awesome. And they do get great results for that reason. But CrossFit doesn't look easy. And so a lot of people in the gym have this other problem where they come to the gym, they want some results, but they tend to choose styles of training, exercises, modalities, pacing. This is not very hard. And it's nice. It's not very hard. It doesn't feel very bad. But it doesn't, it doesn't get them the results they want or they're like, oh, man, I'd have to spend six hours in the gym every week getting the body I want. Now, actually, Betty, it's still three, but you'd have to turn up the intensity, train hard, which is why. It's like if someone eats a bite of food. If you've ever eaten around children, they eat a bite of food every 15 minutes. And they're like, it's going to take me two hours to finish this. Yeah. Maybe you could take a bite of food every minute and then it <laughs> won't. So same idea with adult fitness. Is like you can go harder and... Uh, just there's just not a lot of regular people at the gym who are going to try to do uh, you know clean and press because the first rep you're like this sucks. How many people do burpees at the gym? Just regular burpees, a great exercise. Oh my god, it's awful. I have to jump around. I got to get all the way on the ground. I'm going to let my CrossFit instructor help me with these, and that's why CrossFit's actually a great thing for regular people to get fit with because they will get you into shape so long as you don't break into pieces or quit. A lot of people spend uh, so much time warming up and trying to stretch and get ready before they lift. I've heard you take a controversial approach on this, but when I heard it, I was like, oh, that makes sense. That's what I do. I'm not the person who warms up. I go in and I just get right into it. And I'm like, I pray I don't tear my rotator sure. cuff when I'm loading up the bench. But I've also been training for a while, so I guess I know my body a bit more. But for the average person, what should their warm up look like? If you're training in normal temperature conditions and your body's already of a normal temperature when you walk into the gym, then what you really can do is do put like your 30 rep max on the bar, do a set of 12 with it, put your 20 rep max on the bar, get after a minute or two of rest, do a set of eight with it, put your 10 rep max on the bar, do a set of four with it, and then rest another minute or two. And then you're ready to do your regular lifts for that muscle group. And with muscle groups that are not that muscle group, you can do a couple warm up sets or just one before you go next. So if for chest, just that warm up is good, but then your next chest exercise, you can go right into work sets. So you can do like one easy set of five, feel out the weight and go. So that's a really good strategy. 
if you are very cold physically, or if the gym you train at is quite cold, then I would recommend uh, a brisk five-minute incline walk or jog or elliptical run to get your core body temperature to where you just barely start to sweat. Mm. And then your internal temperature and joint temperatures are good enough to prevent injury largely and to give you a high level of performance. In most cases, it's just not required. Like as soon as I'm walking off the street, getting into my gym, I go to the locker room, I take my coat off, I put it in there. I'm already sweating. So sweet. I'm just going to go right into what's called specific warmups, whichever exercises first, 12, 8, 4, begin. But if you train in Alaska and your gym is powered by one heater off to the side and there's 2,500 square feet of space to the other side and you come in brutally cold, yeah, you're going to want to warm your whole body up before you do anything crazy because cold tissues do have a higher propensity to experience injury. That's a stupid way to get hurt. Do you think that doing the one muscle group per day, like the old school bodybuilding split, do you think that can be still effective if you're hitting it hard and doing the proper amount of sets that we've been discussing? Yeah. The two things on that one, it can be effective, but there are differential degrees of effect and it may be important to you to get higher effect. Both the Russian and the United States militaries are effective in the technical sense but the American military is effective by a factor of 100 more. So when push comes to shove, you're Russia. You don't want to fight the U.S. because you lose that battle. So, there, yeah, if you can get very large muscles by training everything once a week, just dedicated its own day. But it's not very nice consolation when you take third at your bodybuilding show and the guy that took first trains muscles more often than you do. So that's the first thing. Second thing is some muscles, because of their size and their design, and their exposure to tension just take longer to heal from your average workout than other muscles. If I have really large pecs and I do really hardcore movements and I do a lot of them, I get really sore pecs. It might take five days for my pecs to heal. Hmm. And then seven days later when I train them again, oh, I only spent two days not training hard. No big deal. Five out of seven is pretty good. So pecs and quads and glutes and the back, it can take a while to heal. So it's okay to train them once a week. And also you're going to be so well recovered by next time, you're going to train real hard every single time, which is great. But side delts, biceps, oftentimes triceps, forearms, calves, I mean, these muscles are profoundly difficult to really get sore and tired for longer than half a week, often longer than a few days. And so if someone's like, yeah, man, like one of my favorite sort of comedy things that I hear at the gym is shoulder day. Like your side delts take a week to heal? Bullshit. They might take two days to heal. There's no way that anyone who's training side delts once a week is going to get better side delt growth than someone who just trains them twice a week, often just by doubling the volume. That's how far away you are from pushing yourself to your limit. It's, it's almost like if someone who's just a wuss, 17 years old, you're like, okay, try wrestling this person who's an instructor or try. The, what their level of trying is, you compare that to someone who's a Navy SEAL, they're going to be like, you don't even know how to know how to start to ask the question of how to try hard. <laughs> you, uh, trust me, you're not trying hard. You think you are, but you're not. And so to me, training delts and biceps and forearms and some other muscles just once a week isn't trying your hardest by any measure. And this, you will get much better gains if you train that muscle more frequently. When Ronnie Coleman trains his chest, I believe that it takes a week for it to heal. Though even Ronnie trained every muscle twice a week, hilariously. Bad example on my part. But with muscles that are smaller and recover quicker, it's a difficult, is it effective still to, to train once a week? Yes. Is it anywhere close to the most effective? not even by a million. And if you want your best physique results, what I recommend is the following. Don't constrain yourself to the week. Start training each muscle with a good bit of training, enough to make you tired and sore. You start observing how often each muscle roughly takes to heal to where it's prepared to train again. For some muscles, that could be once a week. For many, it'll be twice a week. For some, it's three times a week and even four times a week. And go from there and design a program based on your needs. Some people have trained biceps three times a week, but then reduced it to twice a week and noticed they're getting much more complete recovery. Twice a week blew up their biceps because three times was too much. 
But the opposite story is more often the case where you're training back once a week and you're like, bro, I'm having trouble gaining back size. And someone's like, dude, train twice a week. Like, no way. Like, you recovered by Thursday if you train back Monday. Like, Guess I'll try to find out. They go in Thursday, amazing back workout. Go again next Monday, amazing again. We just doubled your work and probably 1.75 extra gains simply because you were healing so far on time. Uh, one more thing to add here is the week is entirely a human construct. I mean, you could be going to an alien planet where they're like, no, our week is 57 days long. And you're like, all right, Mike Menser, time to train once my chest once every 57 days. You never do that. So muscles don't know how many days you've spent relaxing. They just have their recovery curves. They don't know about the Gregorian calendar. They don't know about the week. So saying just once a week is cool for convenience purposes. It may be close to the right answer in some cases, but just really far from the right answer in many others. And you're trying to gain muscle. You're trying to get jacked. You don't have to say only once a week. It's arbitrary from the beginning.